happens to you when you're like, oh my God, things are not going as I planned it, or I feel a little stuck. I don't even know what to do. That's where the pivot comes in. And today we have a very special guest and we are both going to talk about what pivot looks like, why it's important, why you want to make sure that you're doing it. So please stay tuned. If you feel stuck, if you're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do when life throws curveballs my way. Well, then this is definitely the episode for you. Welcome to the Positivity Experience. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Positivity Experience. It's your girl, Lori, and man, do I have a treat for you today. I know you guys are so used to just kind of hearing my voice, and you've heard one other person uh, on here because you know, uh, going into 2024, I do want to have more guests on from time to time, but I'm going to continue to be extremely selective just because it's got a vibe with me too, not just you guys. And I have had the pleasure and I cannot wait for you to hear her. She is amazing. And then you get to follow her and she's spectacular. And her name is Rebecca Rogers. And who is she, you ask? Well, I'm going to let her give a little bit of that. But beforehand, I want to really set this up because I don't think she's going to give herself nearly the amount of justice and nearly the amount of props because she's going to try to be super humble, which I love that about her, but I want you to know. So she, um, before the pandemic, she, uh, is a teacher. She was a teacher, like came out and she was really, really caring about her students. And a lot of you guys know that I have clients all over the world and I've had a lot of new teachers really have a hard time with the teaching profession, feeling like their hands are tied and a lot of things like that. So she was new uh, coming into it and she was trying to find a, correct me if I'm wrong, to when it's your turn, um, but she was trying to find a way to connect with her students. And, you know, that's when the old tickety talk came out and it was like, hey, you know what, let me let me just really try to connect with them. And not only did she connect, let's talk about the fact that uh, somebody on the other end of this has well over 2 million subscribers just on YouTube alone, not including all of her other platforms. She not only is a social media content creator, and I never want to diminish that fact of it, but she's really trying to utilize her platform to make a difference and to show some, um, I don't want to call them injustices, but some differential as to like, wow, we are really lacking a lot of funding in um, the school system. And yet I can get a really nice hefty check from creating content, which is beautiful. And it has been amazing and spectacular and life-changing for her. Um, but what the topic is today that I really want you guys to understand is it's about pivoting your life without an, expe an, an expectation on what that pivot's going to look like. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to some amazing, amazing, amazing soul of a human being, Rebecca Rogers. You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> my, poor, my cheeks are like so red right now. You're so sweet. You are going to say that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, you know, I, it's so funny because the, the word you used pivot is so, it's so right. Like it's such a good word because like I never intended for any of this to happen. You know, like you said, um, a little bit about me. I was a high school social studies teacher and I, I decided in fifth grade that I wanted to be a teacher for the rest of my life. It was what I loved doing. I felt so at home in my fifth grade teacher's classroom that I just knew like, yeah, this, this is for me. And I spent most of growing up under the impression that I was going to be a teacher for 30 years. And then when I came to high school, I, 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 I felt I belonged so much in my A push, my AP US history classroom. My teacher was psychotic in the best way. I loved him. I've never learned so much in my life than I did for this this old man. And it, it, you either loved him or you hated him. And that's when I decided social studies. And I never in a million years thought that I would not still be teaching today. Um, and when I, I, of course I was a 22 year old teaching 18 year olds. So I, I originally at first I had very strict boundaries about social media about like, I don't, I have to separate myself as the adult in the room. You know, I have 18 year olds asking me to come hang out at taco Tuesday. Like I'm not your friend. I love you, but we're not friends. I'm the adult in the room. 
Um, but it was during the lockdowns that the kids were so sad that that's when I kind of compromised with myself and was like, I need to find a way to make them laugh and I need to find a way to make them smile. Like they're so, I've never seen kids this sad before. Like they were depressed, you know, they were locked up in their houses. And that's when um, I, I let them pick my TikTok handles. I asked, what do you think about me joining TikTok? And it was like the first time I saw them smile ever in my classroom, in my virtual classroom. And I let them pick my handles. Like everyone's always like, what's our Rogers world? And I'm like, I don't, my kids made it, man. I don't know. They, they thought it was clever. Everything else was taken. I don't know. I, I specifically remember the girl in fourth period who made that handle. And I won't say her name because, like, you know, privacy reasons. Sure. But I remember that moment. And I let them pick like appropriate trends for me to do. And then they just start, they would, they started opening up, of course. And so they started trolling me in class. And so then I would troll them back with skits about dumb things they would do or say, like on purpose, you know, we don't, we don't make fun of like the actual, oh, I don't know, or I don't understand, or like, you know, we, we encourage learning. Um, and it's okay to not know something. But you know, when they do it on purpose, I'll absolutely make fun of them for it. Um, and a lot of other people thought that was funny. Um, and a, a, which was a surprise to me, because I didn't think I was ever that funny. But um, it just kind of, exploded from there and I, I quickly realized that I could use the platform to not only make people laugh and make people feel like it was just you know a break from all the crazy in the world but I could really use my skits to playfully showcase issues within the education system and uh, since I, I left the classroom I realized I could also do that with other occupations as well which is kind of what I'm what I've kind of been shifting towards is of course like I'm always gonna have my heart in education but also incorporating like I, I did a podcast episode on nurses uh two weeks ago and one on cybersecurity this past week and hairstylists next week so it's been fun so that's where the pivot comes in and I want to capitalize on something you said you said okay I thought I was going to do this. I had my life planned out in fifth grade. This is what my life is going to look like. I'm going to, and I know you're married and we're going to talk about your lovely husband okay. um, and, and how helpful he is to you as well and supportive. But, um, you know, I, I think it's interesting because the thing about pivot and the thing where people I feel get really hung up is this is what my life looks like. This is what it has to be. And where the pivot comes into play and where so many people get caught up is if it doesn't quite go as they've planned, because now you're fifth grade. So that's like 13 years old, right? You know, you're like, okay, this is it. This is this is my life. Well, it, the moment that can shift, very often people go into depression, they go into anxiety, they fear failure, right? Because then there's this level of like, well, wait, this isn't as planned. And then what you don't realize, what many people don't realize and what you're seeing is life does not really care about what your agenda is. And if you can't adapt, and so many people have this low tolerance of uncertainty, right? When people are uncertain, it creates anxiety, it creates fears, it creates those things and stressors. But if you're not willing to go into them, you're going to have a really hard time being stuck, right? And for you, because you said, you said, okay, this is my boundary. This is how it is, which we love boundaries. You guys know I'm a boundary specialist. You know, I love my boundaries. But I love that you said in that moment, hmm, you took yourself out of that equation. I don't even know if you even realized you did it because I think it was more subconscious. You were like, okay, this isn't, this isn't what I set out to do because I was trying to keep this really good distance. They're only a couple of years younger than me. I still want to have respect. I'm not your buddy. But at this point, you could see everybody. And I think everybody can listening to this can relate because we've all been part of this lockdown thing and no socialization. Uh, my son, he's 27 and he was uh, going to Salisbury at that time. And he had like one week of classes and then that's it. It is all virtual again. And so that became problematic. And what you did was you stepped in, no matter how uncomfortable you were, because I know there was some discomfort there, but you were like, oh God, what does this mean? Is this silly? But at this point, you allowed yourself to do that. So here's a question that I have for you. Okay. Because, you know, I'm always a problem solver in many ways. That's what my job is. 
where you are today, like right now, the Rebecca today, where do you feel that if you could make some tweaks, give me like two places that you feel that you still struggle with? Um, I think it's so funny because you, you made me think of it when you were just talking about feeling like you have to plan everything out and being like dumbfounded when it doesn't work out. And I still, I still catch myself doing that sometimes because again, you know, like I went so many years under the impression that I'm going to be a teacher. And, you know, for those that don't know, like when you're a teacher, you have your lesson plans and like, you don't teach the exact same thing for 30 years, but you figure out, oh, like this was a really good activity. I want to keep doing this each year because it helped it like kids really get it. Oh, but this one isn't good. How can I tweak this next time kind of thing? And so you, you kind of have this idea of knowing what works and what doesn't work and kind of like using what you know works, if that makes sense. If I'm, please tell me if I'm not making any no, sense. No, 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 I got you. I'm with you. Yeah. Sometimes I, in like the, the, the good routine of what works sometimes from like, from my teaching days. And again, I only taught for like five years. Okay. So like, I, I don't want anyone to be like, oh yeah, she was take, carrying this mentality in for 15 years in the classroom. I was only a teacher for five years. Um, but sometimes I carry that routine into content creation of I have to do X, Y, Z because this worked. So I have to keep doing it. And I, I'm trying to think of an example right now. Um, <laughs> now of ADHD, as soon as I'm trying to think of it, I'm blanking. Um, oh, yeah. I, the, these skits of like I saw another creator post um, a 10-minute skit broken up into parts and – posted one clip every day and at the end posted the whole full thing as a full video and that works for her and I wanted to try that that looks so cool and I tried it and it didn't work and I said oh dang I guess that's something that doesn't work back to the drawing board and my husband goes Rebecca why don't you just post the full one first and then post the clips and then link it so that they're all successful and I like didn't even think about like thinking of it in another way because I'm so used to like, did this work? Did it not work? Oh, okay, I guess it didn't work. Moving on, what's the next thing? What can I replace it with kind of mentality? And like, I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind if that makes any sense. I feel like I'm rambling. I feel like this is a bad example. First of all, I have adult ADHD. A lot of the people listening are going to be like, oh my God, I feel so seen right now. I feel so free. Yeah, it's like, I didn't, I didn't so even right now. think about it. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, the like, small tweak that you just don't, you don't, you're like, oh, that feels so simple. What? <laughs> but I think what you're telling me, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you may still um, be challenged with a little bit of that black and white thinking. Is that a, kind of a fair yes. assessment? Yes. Okay. Thank you for putting that into yeah, words I, I, for me. I was <laughs> like, wait, how did I hear that? Did I hear that correctly? Well, because. Yeah, that most people listening to this, and, and I lived that way for a very long time, is it's either this or this. If this, and I think right. so, because now you're kind of a seasoned, because how long have you been a professional full-time content creator? Um, It's two or three years at this point. Yeah. So yeah. now- wow. But even isn't that crazy, but like even wow. now, right, you know, a, a traditional kind of like, okay, this kind of works for me, right? Like, you know, uh, you know, your numbers are growing and, and you kind of know, and you're, and you're doing the beautiful thing, which I love that you're doing. And it's, I think where everybody needs to go is don't just stay in one niche. Like, yeah, it's cool to do skits, but like, yeah. okay, teaching is great. That's your passion, but oh my God. Okay. How many times can you talk about teaching? Right? Like, you know, and so it adds and then people can see your personality, but I think too, if you are not embracing the uncertainty of life, you would absolutely, God bless you, I saw that, um, you would absolutely not do well as a content creator. Because if you're expecting what worked Monday to work on next Monday, that may never happen. And I think what a good a good question that I have for you in this whole pivot thing and, it, and by the way, anybody listening to this, you don't have to be a content creator for what I'm getting ready to ask her and what her response is. You can do this in, in your life in general. When you are seeing things not go 
as you planned it. Let's say the numbers aren't good or like in, in, in real, in other people in real life, like, oh man, that, that project didn't go as I planned it. Or I really wanted this to be this way. And oh my God, you know what? If I give more time and if I give more of myself, it'll do better. And then you start burning yourself out. So how do you cope when things because not everything isn't sunshine and roses, right? Nothing is always sunshine and roses. So when the curveballs get flung your way or the trolls come out or whatever the case may be, and you see, you just feel uncertain, how are you handling that? Um, I've actually been thinking about this topic for like a little while. And I think the, the biggest thing that I can say is that you can't take it personally. And I, I think something that I see not just I see in a lot of content creators, but I also see in a lot of people is that when they set something up, whether it be content or a new job or a small business or a project or anything, and they pour their heart and soul into it and they think that it is like it's good, you know, it's, it's successful to a degree and it, it works out. But at, at some point you exhaust all the options for what you're doing. You exhaust your full potential with what you're doing. And you have to make a choice. You can either make a choice of, or even if it, it doesn't work out, even if it, it doesn't see that success, regardless, either or. At some point, you have to understand, okay, if I continue doing what I'm doing, I'm going to continue seeing these results. So I can either be okay with that, and whether you're a content creator and just okay with the audience that you have created and are okay with not continuing to grow or a business owner, okay with the um, customers and what I have in the success that I have now, or you can change up what you're doing and try other things. And the people who are still with you will most likely stay with you as you continue to find new people. And the issue is when you start taking it personally. Well, I poured my heart and soul into this. Well, I love this. I it, This stuff means a lot to me. What I'm doing is sentimental to me. And when you start taking it personally of, well, people should just like it. I think that's when... Content creators, business owners, people in general start getting stuck. And it th that that's when you really start to lose the, the big picture of, do you want to grow? Do you want to reach the success? And you kind of have to pick. Do you want to keep it personal? And are you okay with what you've accomplished so far? Or are you willing to put your ego aside and put your feelings aside and decide, okay, I'm going to do something differently. And I have really had to learn not to take it personally. And it's it's business. So there will be videos that like, like I'm very passionate about social studies. I love history. I didn't just teach it. Like I loved social studies. Do you know how many um, long form YouTube history videos I put out before I realized, okay, people just don't want to see that from me. And it's okay. And I love it so much. And I could talk history all day long. But if people don't want to see that, and that's, you know what, it is what it is. And sometimes I put out content that um, I'm not going to say that I don't love because I have a rule that if I don't love it, I'm not going to do it. So maybe I won't use me as an example. But I do know that there are content creators that put out content that they don't love making, but they know people like to see it. And that's, that's, they're not taking it personally. And it's a business decision. And it's not just about you and your feelings and your ego and what you think is good. It's about the people receiving. Do they want to come to this store? Do they want to come to this restaurant? Do they want to watch this content? Do they want to buy that product? You can think that your fidget toy with blue glitter looks so great all day long. But if people hate glitter, they're not going to buy it, whether you think it looks nice or not. Oh my God, I love that you brought up the ego because you know that that's my jam. And it's interesting because, <laughs> well, well, and, and it's interesting. And I'd love to talk to, I find someone asked me and, um, uh, and if uh, just a little backstory. So Rebecca and I, I got to go to a private dinner that YouTube uh, hosted and actually Rebecca was the host. And uh, it was really nice. It was very intimate. It was really great to sit around other people who can kind of understand your plight and your journey. And someone had said to me, because I'm, I'm 52, right? And uh, some people, somebody had said to me, you know, I, I see that you sort of hang out with a lot of the, say, younger content creators. I mean, I, I have some content creators that I hang out with or friends or whatever. And 
I've had some of the younger people, and I'm interested to see what your take is on this, where, so like somebody like for me, right, you know how the time in social media is kind of the young era or the younger area. And for me, going in on what you said, if I worried about taking things personal, right? Like my growth isn't as fast as maybe somebody who's 26 doing the exact same thing, right? Just that's just, that's life when I won. But my whole thing is if I worried about what the numbers were versus the outreach that I have, right? Because I've had people come in my DMs and people say, say, oh my God, you know, you, you gave me some tools that literally changed my life. Okay. That one person makes that so much better than a paycheck right? Like th- th- there's something to that. And I feel like the authenticity, and I had somebody at YouTube at the VidCon thing tell me this um, while I was there, said, you know, the difference between you and some people is you're authentic and you're unapologetically, unapologetically, un, um, you know, authentic. And I think it's because I don't worry about what they say, right? Because you have to build the ship and then they will come. So with what you're saying, which I 100% agree, like it's the ego thing, like the ego thing will screw you every single time, right? Every time. And I think, um, and I'm really interested on what your take is. When people say, again, you don't have to be a content creator, you have to be a business, you can do anything. When people think I got to go harder, right? Because I have to prove myself or I have to show value or I have to show worth versus going, you know what? Like, you know what? I'm not going to go to that work function. You know what? I know everybody's going. I know it's not going to be favorable that I'm not going, but I need it for my mental health. Or you know what? I'm not going to post this entire month. I'm going to take the whole month off. Um, in your, from where you see it, just from yourself and other people that you work with and you've seen in other areas, why do you think there's such a fear in going, you know what? I need a minute. Why do you think there's such a fear in that? I I have so many thoughts about everything that you just said. Um, but I'll start I'll start with this question. I think that there's this idea that if you that when you have the momentum going, that if you do anything to waver the momentum at all, that it won't pick back up. Um, and I have also felt this fear, but I have also been in this industry for long enough that I've, I, I know, I understand that whether it's content creation, whether it's business stuff, um, the success really does come in waves. Um, content creation, like I, I immediately skyrocketed when I first started. And once I reached the peak of my, what I was going to be able to do with the content I was doing, I saw a plateau and then I tried a bunch of things and I saw a dip and I'm trying new things and I'm seeing another peak again. So like, it's a wave. Even businesses. Think about the toy industry. The waves between Christmas to spring to summer break. Hey, cat. <laughs> My Clover. cat is watching me from right there. Clover. This is Clover. <laughs> Mine is uh, like, mom, come sit. I'm like, I'm on this couch. Um, um, but I, I think it's understanding that true success is not just only seeing upwards momentum because if you only know how to ride the wave you don't know how to recover if there's a fumble I think it's much more valuable to understand how to create successful waves than to just burn yourself going up and up and up and up because then you're going to burn out and you're it, there's no longevity in that if that makes sense that there's why there's a statistic that my friend looked up uh, a few months ago um, because as you know I also started my my second podcast mm-hmm. I had a first one kind of taken from me and now I'm starting my my second one and it I was feeling very frustrated because I was like I don't understand where everybody is. Like I saw the numbers for the other one drop when I left and I started to say, where, where is everybody? Where are all those people? And, um, statistically it takes, uh, only statistically most podcasts stop at episode 21. Um, so if you go past episode 21, you are statistically, um, going to find more success and higher success rates because most just give up after 21. And so then that gave me like a goal of, okay, I can't freak out about this until episode 21. Let's see where I am at episode 21 kind of thing. And I, 
I feel like I'm talking in circles because like my ADHD is really like on Again, a high roll right to, You do not have to explain that to us. We well, like, am I making you. sense? <laughs> yes. Am I making sense? Yes, you make, you make yeah. so much sense because, <laughs> because that's, that's, that's the question, right? Like the question is yeah. like, you know, because some people, again, you don't have to be a content creator. This is life in general. Like, oh my God, okay. Yes. I just got hired as a brand new teacher. Well, I better go hardcore. I better grade my papers till every night at Saturday. And, and oh my God, and I got to be prepared. Well, you're going to, like you said, you're going to burn yourself out and that's not success. And I think yeah. that's the other right. thing. So, so like with you, right. if, if YouTube went away, if, if not just YouTube, if all your content went bye-bye, right? Right. You just, it was gone. Like, Rebecca's world is no more. I mean, Rebecca's world's always going to exist, but you know what I mean. <laughs> what would you do? If I, I honestly, what I would probably do is take my experience in social media and like go work at one of the platforms. Mm -hmm. But because I'd still make more but than do you hear what I you just said? <laughs> this is why I asked you that question. You didn't go, oh my God, I don't know. Like I, I, Holy cow. I oh, I thought about it. I think about this often. Because, you oh, know, yeah. it, it, that's the thing. When when you're in an uh, un unconventional line of work, that's always people's first question. And it's wild that people have the audacity to, like, ask that in casual conversation. Not even, like, close friends and family members. Yeah. Like, people that I'm not very close with. Well, what are you going to do if it all goes away? Well, first of all, why are you like you don't know me why are you actively like assuming that i'm gonna fail that's like a really weird thing to say to it someone is. Like you. What? It is. yeah um, personal perspective it, 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 yeah right like, people have asked me that enough that i've really had to sit down and think and I, i'm really not it's so funny because like first of all my my husband also quit his job to help me with what i'm doing because i needed more help um and like my husband is an attorney like my husband would just go get a job and we'd be completely fine. <laughs> but see, like, that's, it's that's not the difference. That is the difference. Yes. Because, and the reason yes. I love to ask that question to people who are other, you know, content creators is because I've had a lot of content creators literally reach out to me personally and go, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing really, really good. Like I'm making well into the six figures and I think I'm okay. But I'm not really sure what I'd do if it all went away. That's why I love it. Right, and that's why you have to plan. Like you have to, whether it's content, business, whatever. If you're only used to that upward momentum, once you get to that episode 27 and you're burnt out and you can't function, the, the moment you see any kind of lull or dip or anything because you physically have to take a break, well, that's when people give up. They're like, oh my God, the upward is gone. I, it must be failing. I guess we can't like that. That's why that's why a lot of these things work out. And I and I understand that sometimes there are other outside circumstances to small businesses and things like that. Like we I, I've been very fortunate in my endeavors and what I've been creating. And I definitely don't want to um, kick down anyone that has like really just had unforeseen circumstances or had to rely on banks, loans, like those kinds of things. Like you can't really control that. Um, but so many people start something and just expect only to see up, 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 that the moment they see anything else or the moment they have to take a break or the moment they're not seeing immediate results, they just give up. And that's where those podcast statistics come from. And that's why so many people don't do content creation. Like I, I have found that just like so many people don't just ask, hey, can I X, Y, Z? And that's why most people don't. like I went to the airport. I went to, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was at the airport the other day and I saw Conan O'Brien oh, in the Delta Sky. Did you say I hey. did? Did you say hi? I walked, I walked right up to him and I was like, are you Conan O'Brien? And he said, yeah. And I said, hi, my name's Rebecca Rogers. I'm a full time YouTuber. Like, how cool do I need to be to do something with you? And he said, yeah, a lot of, he goes, I, I've come to contact with a lot of content creators and a lot of them are too scared to ask me that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm not. <laughs> That's and then so I got, opportunity. Right, so I got his email and I got his phone number and I'm like, cool, I'll email you when I get back. And I, I that's now like my go-to example of so many people are afraid to try. So many people are afraid to put themselves out there. And so many people are afraid to just ask so it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen for them. 
well, take, how do you, how, it's, not, it's not even a risk. It's not even a risk. I asked a question. The worst they can say is no. Well, I mean, why are you on this podcast? Who asked? I was at dinner yeah, and yeah. I said, I said, Hey, I said, you know what? Knowing what you do, this is great. Why don't you come on my podcast? I mean, if you said, no, nah, it's not my jam. I'd been like, okay, well, I mean, I'm not out. And I think here's the thing. People are too concerned with rejection because what yes. you said earlier is they take it personal, right? Yes. And I know that it is, that it's a little bit more difficult with people like us with ADHD because of like rejection sensitivity. Yes. Um, and that, that has also been a really big struggle for me. And I, I've really just had to actively work on it and teach myself and make sure that I understand that in the business world, it really is not personal. Um, even, you know, setting up my second podcast um, or my, my new podcast, like finding a company that would produce it when I, you know, so many podcast companies are like, oh, you have to have this many active downloads a week in mm -hmm. order to get XYZ. And I'm like, can you use my old numbers, <laughs> please? Like, and I, I just have to, I really, it was really hard. Like that was such a shot to the gut for me and a kick to, gut, to kick to the gut. But I just, it, it's something that unfortunately when we have um, illnesses like ADHD and rejection sensitivity that we just, we do have to work a little bit harder. And that just is the reality of it. And it's one of those things where you can decide to just suck it up and do it like I have been doing it. Or you can decide I can't. And that's okay too. Like there's not a right or wrong answer. It's about what you would be happy doing. And if it would make you too uncomfortable to work through that kind of rejection sensitivity, that's your choice. And that's okay. And that's valid. But for me... I unfortunately am one of the most stubborn people and headstrong individuals that like my parents, whenever, whenever people ask them, like, are you surprised? They're like, no, <laughs> like I was, I didn't do bad things as a kid, but like I was headstrong. I did what I wanted to do. Like I, it's so, it's, it's such a funny mix. Cause like, I didn't get into anything like, I, I didn't get anything to anything bad. Like I never did the drinking or the partying or anything like that. But like I did what I wanted to do 100%. If I felt like something was right, I did it. I didn't care. I didn't care. I did it. And I've always been that way. So for me, I would not be happy with my life if I just sat there and took the abuses from teaching or gave up the paycheck from social media because I couldn't do the rejection sensitivity or I could gave up the paycheck from social media because um, the school system said I couldn't monetize anything like I that wouldn't make me happy. And it's really all just a personal preference. And that's OK. So what you told me just now is I love myself. And if I'm not going to make me happy, my husband can't make me happy. I mean, he can add to my happiness. My husband can't make me happy. My love teaching, love the kids, that alone can't make me happy. And I'm not going to rely upon that. So what you just demonstrated, because so many people go, well, what is that like self-love? Self-love isn't just always like, I love myself and let's do self-care, by the way. Huge proponent of yes, do, do all of that. But it's what you just said, which is why I needed you here, right? Because you're showing, because I'm, I mean, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think life is all sunshine and roses in Rebecca's world, right? Like, you, like you have, oh, you absolutely have those things. And you mentioned your hubby, and I wanted to bring him up. Is I love that a he's an attorney, so that's very, very helpful to you. Um, <laughs> you sort of being the one in the front, like you know, the front person, the person, the face. Um, how do you find time to find balance and? Does Rebecca have Rebecca time alone? Not just with the spouse, not just doing content. Do you have life outside of all of those things? Oh, yeah. Like I, I really love the system that we have. Um, I, I value it so hard. So um, my, my husband 
Ethan obviously has been like helping me with whatever I needed since I started social media. He'll always make the time because he's just that person. Um, but it was when they switched him from, so he used to work for the state um, as an attorney and they switched him from unemployment law to workers comp. And he just felt physically ill going in every day that he was still like, he felt like he was actually like making a difference in unemployment law, but then to workers comp, he was still looking after cases 15 years old. And he's like, nothing gets resolved. Nothing gets fit. Like I feel sick going in every day. So I said, you know what? I need help videoing. I need help. I need, I just need help in general. I have friends who have teams of like full-time videographers and editors and assistants and blah, 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 blah. And they have a whole team they hired. And it would just make so much more sense if instead of hiring all these people, if you just did it with me. And we decided that was when he was going to stay home and like do this stuff with me full time. So like when I'm recording and doing stuff, he'll edit or he'll respond to my comments or my emails or anything like that. Um, and he'll come and like he really keeps my head on my shoulders when I go to events. Like he wasn't at the VidCon you were at because his brother was getting married and I could miss the rehearsal dinner, but he could not miss the rehearsal yeah, dinner. He <laughs> <laughs> would not have heard the end of that. Um but like even the one in June, like the VidCon in June, I I get very go, 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 like tunnel vision. My ADHD is like, oh, I have to do this and now I have to do that and blah, 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 blah. And so he always comes up behind me and makes sure that I'm eating something or that I'm drinking water or that I'm taking a second. And if he sees me getting overwhelmed, he'll say that he needs me to do something and he'll just like sit me in a room for five minutes. And that's so helpful. But even just at home, like every night when we're done, we have our video game time and we have a discord of guys that we just play games with. And it's so funny because at first we were like, should we stream this? And we were like, no, this needs to be like our time. And every night, me and Avery and these guys just play games. And that's it. That's until like midnight every night. Every night. And that's that's our decompressed time. And then Avery also plays pickleball. And so every other day he'll be gone for like four or five hours. (laughs) Or like two, two or three times a week. He'll be gone for like half the day. And that's when I just get to be by myself and I get to just sit on a couch with the cats and like read a book or do something and just like be by myself, not have to hear anybody, not have to talk to anybody. And I just, I I value everything about it. It's a good balance for me. It's a good balance of he helps make sure that I stay on track. Um, Because I also like, I don't, I don't, I'm not on medication for my ADHD. And that's kind of a longer story. Mm -hmm. Um, Avery's mom passed of like heart complications. And so like the side effects really stressed him out for a while. Um, And so like, I was like, okay, like he really worried about like Adderall and things like that and the side effects. And I was like, okay, it's, uh, I don't, I'm, you know what? I'm okay. I can manage right now. And so um, we were, I, we're kind of getting back into like getting medication, but it's just been a while. So I'm not on it right now. Um, so he helps keep me on track, like during the days and helps me get stuff situated and recording. And then we just have our us time. And what's your game of choice when you guys game? What's your game of choice? I got in there. We play League of Legends. We're, <laughs> we're total nerds. Oh my God. <laughs> so my daughter, it's funny. I feel like you'll appreciate this. Just as we were talking, she came in from uh, her college class. And she plays Osu. Are you familiar with Osu? No, but they might be. The guy, oh they, they're so and much it's better. Like, it's real good for ADHD, different. but it's like, you have to, she tried showing me this. Ma, I realized I can't do it. But like, so we're going to head down to Universal next month just in, uh, because why? Because Mario World is there. So when you said you're a total nerd, I'm like, oh my God, welcome. We all have Switches. We all play Zelda. We all play, like, you know, those are sort of our thing. And uh, so you're just speaking my love language. And now that you told me Avery plays pickleball, I'm going to have to drive down to North Carolina and we're going to, oh uh, yeah. well, and I play singles pickleball. So I'm going to have to take Avery out and we're going to have to do pickleballing and you're going to be like, oh my God, because my husband and you would sit down and do whatever you wanted to do. And me and Avery would come back and we'd be like, oh my God, let me tell you about this. And you'd be like, yay, thank you. Like, <laughs> Avery, Avery, 
Avery like plays tournaments. Like he takes pickleball very seriously. Oh my God. I <laughs> love that. So as we think, wrap up, huh? What were you going to say? Yeah. Oh no. I, I, I think he's like a, I, he's either a four five or a five O. Oh I, <laughs> he's it's like so the man of the day. Well, you, and number one, before we even close to wrap up, number one, I want to make sure in the show notes here, in the description, you're going to have all of Rebecca's stuff. You're going to have her podcast. You are going to have her all of her social links. You're going to have all of that. So please, please, please make sure that you go. The show notes are just the description. So no matter where you're getting the show right now, whether it be YouTube, whether it be any Stitcher, or I guess it's not a thing anymore, Spotify, anything like that, um, feel free. Please, please, please support and follow her. She is like, you've heard her and she's barely only scratching the surface. And, you know, we want more of this positivity because so much and, and honesty, right? Because I mean, she's covered a lot of things. A, you got to pivot. B, you can either go into the discomfort or not, but it's a choice. And whatever choice you make, you have to live with whatever the outcome is going to be. And even if it's going good, 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 well, it's going good. And then it starts to plateau or it even starts to dip down. If you are stuck on that upswing, you're going to just not and, and failure is not bad, by the way. Failure is is a mandatory part of success. You must fail. But leaving the beautiful people in the listener land here, what would be one thing that you want to leave them with? If there's something that you really, really want to do, the biggest thing stopping you is yourself. And your fear and hesitations, that's your biggest obstacle. Because I think people would be very surprised as to how attainable their goals are if they just put themselves out there. Oh my God, I love that. And you guys, you know I have a Patreon that always compliments this podcast. So if you're on Patreon, uh, you will get the worksheet on um, when to tell that it might be time to pivot, how to react when the, the pivot needs to happen, not to spiral kind of out of control. So you guys know that if you're on my Patreon, if you're not on Patreon and that does interest you, again, in the show notes, you'll have it, or you can go to patreon.com forward slash the positivity experience. So this way, and the reason I do that is I always like to give people a toolbox, you know, something to kind of see because you could hear what Rebecca and I are both saying and go, okay, yeah. And then go, God, I don't know where to start. So the worksheets are always going to be helpful because it gives you a little place of reference. But I am so excited that we got to do this today. And I, and I know I can almost guarantee you out here in listener land, they are going to just feel so much inspiration. They are going to feel so much power because at the end of the day, even though you're not in a classroom teaching, you are making a world of difference. I am a better person because our paths crossed. I am excited that I'm in your world, that I'm in Rebecca's world because I love it. There. <laughs> um, and I just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing time. Thank you for sharing to the listeners. And hopefully, you know, we can keep providing a place collectively. And another thing for you guys to be aware of is like, you know, you're allowed to collaborate with people in life on things like it, nobody can gatekeep things. Like stop thinking that if somebody else has it, you can't have it. And how about right. let's just all find people we vibe with and let's try to make a difference because I know you've paid attention. We we live in the Hunger Games right now and you never know what life is going to be like. <laughs> Right? Like, we are always a tribute. Like, oh my God, it's Monday. It's your turn to be a tribute. So I want to thank you for sharing your time. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. I know for a fact that you're going to get some new subscribers and listeners and supporters, and I'm so happy for it. I just want to thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. This was so much fun. I love this. Good. And hopefully we can do it again. Oh, and oh, absolutely. Is there anything that you want to promote other than the fact that I'm going to have all of your links in there? Is there anything that you um, would like to share? Um, now I'm on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, if they're interested, my podcast is called, would you believe? I love that. And that's on every platform. Right? That's on every yes, platform. Every. Yeah. Yep. And it's it's only, only, 
Oh, sorry. Only no. the video is only on Facebook and YouTube, but the audio is everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. That's how it is here. So you guys will have access to that. Uh, when she said that, it's also going to be right there on the screen. But also, uh, please, please, please go right to the show notes. It's super easy. Also follow uh, my Instagram, of course, official Lori Wheeler, and you'll see when we post it up and uh, she'll share it. And, you know, I think that you'll find that she's an amazing addition to your social platform. So with that being said, I love you and have an amazing, amazing week.